miles from home We walk the road alone In search for gold We sail across the sea Chasing dreams we hope to be Little boy looking at the mountains Top, that he is a taste to climb He's got a cold hand and a tear in his eye But he takes another
Hey everyone. Sorry, let's try again. Um, so basically, um, we're here. I have the guard rays into my skin. We're going to um, be doing a stream here from the Tales of Lithuan team. I think that it's probably just going to be casual where we're going to talk about... Uh, I'm going to answer questions and then I'm going to be animating on uh, one of the scenes or maybe more from the next Choose the Path episode. We've been super busy on the production lately, so um, I think that the next Choose the Path is going to come uh, uh, next month sometime. Let me just check out if I can get your comments up. Um, here we go. Yeah, now I can see. <laughs> yes, handsome land indeed. You can thank my mom and dad for that. All right. Literally, uh, the last hour we got this workstation set up, and um, it's it's been a, a little bit of like a stress here the last five minutes because we had to get the Wacom um, Syntex set up, and we needed to get Anna um, as a moderator and Jenny, who's sitting right over here. I'm trying to figure out how I can get the chat out here. Pop out chat. Perfect. Perfect. Great. All right. Let me know if you still want to have music going. Uh, if not, then I'm just going to throw myself into this. Um, by 
flicking the scene on. Okay, so this is basically how we have like, uh, yeah, you just saw a little sneak sneak peek from uh, Dora's Revenge there. But um, today we're gonna be focusing on the choose the path because we have a lot of scenes in the next one that we need to make. So I'm gonna use this stream for that. Do you have any questions we should go through to begin with? Just shoot ahead, we'll start with that. Okay, so music. Um, this other screen is really killing me. Here we go. Uh, let's go for some of the old tracks. Maybe we should just open up some of the season one tracks. Those are always good. I'm just going to throw all of them in here, so the music is going to play, but remember that uh, there might be some pretty uh, loud ones, so then you just adjust. Okay, I would just need to find the chat again. Uh, here we go. How does it sound? Can you hear me well, loud and clear? A bit lower. Let's do it. It is very loud here as well. Let me know if the music now is better. Oh, it's gone now. <laughs> of course. Way too loud. <laughs> How is it now? Fuck. How is it now? I'm not gonna touch it anymore, okay? <laughs> Great. All right, and I have my little uh, V2 and Wilhelm shirt on for the occasion. Yeah, but somebody asked if how the corona, uh, how the coronavirus uh, affected us, and um, basically we had to work from home for two months um, and uh, the two months were, were just like really efficient we put up our animation studios at home we were each sitting and having different uh, how do you say uh, uh, meetings every day where we would be going through things and sending out tasks but uh, so oh thank you so much Renko <laughs> this is awesome uh, that's the first time I, I try that <laughs> Um, but um, yeah, so the coronavirus uh, didn't affect the team super much. It delayed the production a little bit, but that's it. Yeah, other questions? Just shoot them in. I think that mostly it was, you know, just waiting the coronavirus. Conflicts ask why I'm so cool. I don't know. I just like uh, roll with it, bro. <laughs> no, I think that uh, I, yeah, that's hard for me to to answer. I'm just like trying to be kind to people and uh, yeah. What are your inspirations for some of the character designs? Well, a lot of these designs were created back when um, back when me and Kenneth uh, Lelka, uh, who I made the reward with, we created this world and. Um, a lot of the designs are 
just come from fun silhouettes and a lot of inspirations. Um, I think that the most important thing in, in Tales of Lethran is that everybody feels like a sub-character. None of them should, uh, f uh, should feel like a main character. They're all like uh, hipsters running around in this fantasy world. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I think it's just appeal and uh, it's the style I also really love. How many are working on the animations? So on the team, we've been a lot of people. Uh, I'm just sitting with the end credits, actually. Um, I can just try to... Ah, but I think that in total, we've been on the production. The core team has probably been uh, between four to six people, and then we've had a lot of extra help from other places. Um, and mostly, I would say that... Um, what? What is what's happening? Oh, that's great. So, yeah, we just learned that uh, that uh, one of the team members' mom is in the chat. <laughs> so, hello. You can see uh, Natasha sitting right over here. Hello. Uh, James is hiding over there. And we have Anna and uh, Jenny over there. Yeah. So, we're. It's like 8 10 here at the studio right now and uh, in the evening and um, let me just get this back just as I shouldn't do this <laughs> oh my god I should never have touched this yeah so before the stream just like ordered some pizza and getting ready for some hour of drawing okay other questions while we're at the while we're at it. My favorite pizza is I usually pick the ones with too much on and I always regret that. Uh, so I guess okay, a little lower with the music. Just turned it down a little. Um, ham and mushrooms, always a classic, uh, classic go-to. <laughs> Were any of you in the stream here? Did you go to the, um, did you see the accidental stream I had like 40 minutes ago? Because I had the most embarrassing moment before where I went live while I was chatting with Andreas, who did the role-playing system for Tales of Lethran, and, um, that was pretty cringe-worthy. If you saw it, <laughs> then uh, it's private now. I'll look at it in three years and remind myself that you're still a noob, uh, even though you learn every day. <laughs> what else? Um, what inspired the series? Art style. It was mainly like um, me and Kenny there. We had this animation jam. We did a lot uh, back in the school years and. Um, we got inspired from our own um, own uh, drawing style, but also from Fuli Kuli and Masaka Yosa. And um, there's a movie called um, uh, Las Gars in France that was also really insp inspiring. Um, maybe we should turn, like, close the window. I just, I don't know if we can hear a lot of people. Uh, yeah. Um, what inspired me most while creating the world of Elithran? I think that uh, the biggest inspiration came from Dungeons and Dragons and uh, hanging out with friends who are also, you know, nerdy, loving fantasy stuff, digging down in lore, Pokemon, uh, you know, the travel feel. That was what started it, but each episode has been... Um, has been a story that has been fitting with what I wanted to tell at that point. So even though there's like a red arc, each of the characters has like a different theme, which fits pretty well with what happened in our life at that point. Yeah, and Pia Pia, Pia, Pia says, Pokemon question mark, what the? And um, 
when I say Pokemon, it's the feeling of playing the old games, not like the new stream today, uh, where they make like League of Legends Pokemon. Uh, that was uh, that was kind of like uh, mainstreaming it even more. But uh, I think that the the feel of Pokemon back in the days felt like a really cool RPG setting, and you could put yourself in a match, and you went around in this world to become a champion. I thought that was really cool. Also, in the first season of the TV series. Um, Eco asks if I've considered doing any comic books, and we actually did one. I'm, I'm heavily inspired by graphic novels and like having read comics my whole life. So, Thug's Life actually is like a, a comic that was created. Um, so that episode spawned from a, a comic. Um, yeah. And I think probably we sh will do more, depending on how busy you are. Maybe some of the episodes will become web comics. Uh, I've been looking into it. All right. Um, how do you keep the overlapping stories straight? I personally have a timing problem with mine. Do you have a method? Thanks for the question, Benevolent Rose. Uh, with all world building and stories, you know, you have to. And that's something every time you get surprised of how like you brainstorm, get a lot of ideas, then you narrow down to simplify, and then you brainstorm, get a lot of ideas, and then you narrow down until you have uh, like the, the perfect place you want to be. But if you're bad at killing your darlings and you want all the elements of your world in each story, then, uh, then you're going to face a wall at some point or have a hard time pitching it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, my very class to role play. <laughs> Thanks, Tor. I know you. Um, Tor also does uh, cool comics. But um, uh, what can we say to that? My favorite class to role play. It changes all the time. Uh, as a dungeon master, you know, I get to play a lot of different uh, characters. I think. Um, having the vision of the whole world but when I'm a player I started out really liking rogues and then I moved on to really loving bards obviously and uh, then um, I would say right now it's very weird but uh, because I've been playing a lot of um, I've been painting Warhammer <laughs> Age of Sigma a lot like 500 figures and that's like what I do when my girlfriend watches Netflix and because of those I think that uh, Paladins are really interesting uh, right now. <laughs> yeah. Adam says that he really wants to play D and D, but he don't have any friends. So uh, give him a shout and a hug. Send your love to him and maybe make a digital D and D group. Um, I think it's easy to find people to play D and D now. It was much harder back when I was a kid. Uh, to find people who didn't completely not understand what it was. All right. Yeah, PAP, I, um, I also played Warhammer Battle version 8. And I think they're bringing back the old world now with the, um, with the next release. So I can use my vampire accounts again. All right. But um, yeah, maybe I'll show some of my figures later. I love flashing those <laughs> um, what's a tip you'd like to give to anyone wanting to start in the animation industry well first of all find some good friends who also are creative and have fun with doing it um, get really good at it and um, don't f get blocked or stopped by the first um, uh, you know dream of getting into it that everybody I know has had like really uh, different paths in this industry um, Hosin says I should have tried I should try Divinity Original Sin 2 if I want to play some D&D &D. oh yeah actually I think that was for the other guy but I have of course played Divinity 2 it's really good it's cool it's back to the old school like uh, Baldur's Gate and all that where you can play with others it's really fun what else what else T 
tell us more about the city, Gaku. Okay, yeah. I'm just gonna start going into this kind of animation, but keep shooting the questions I look up and, and answer um, and talk while we go through this. And remember to save the music's too loud, then I also get a little notification over here. Um, Anna here is a mod, uh, um, mod control. Moderator. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, are there other video games that inspired you? Yes, of course. I've played too many video games. And um, actually, just while we're at it, if all of you just like, or who are also on Twitch, go follow this Twitch link I'm just going to send. Because we just started like um, a Tales of Lethran Twitch. Uh, and this is like the first stream there, so it would really, really be helpful if we could get some, um, some followers there, because uh, I think that's gonna be a good place to do casual drawings and doodles and just talk about low videos, uh, where YouTube is like the base. But it's a really good place for to expand. Do you have the the link to it, or should I find it? Or link to what? Uh, I'm just gonna send the link to Twitch. Sorry. <laughs> Here we go. This is the link. Go to the comments. All right, well, that would be really helpful. Now I'm just going to dig into some animation. So, last time. Last time when we um, were in the Choose the Path episode, we got the choice. Actually, let's just open up the... Can I open up that? Yeah, full screen. I'm going to go to this one. So last time we had an ending where uh, Meg and Ken had to choose whether, the, um, whether they should shoot the Sphinx or if they should shoot the Knights. And before that, we had a choice where Sylvia and Tatiana, we, we had a choice whether Tatiana should, um, no, Vermouth should punish Sylvia by turning her to stone, or um, if they should um, turn her to stone, or hypnotize her, or throw Sylvia into the rift. So, this one will follow up on both of these cliffhangers. Oh, I think you have the Twitch open and we're getting a mild echo. That's good to know. So I'm going to turn off this uh, Twitch. Yes. Sorry about that. The Twitch was open. It's well spotted over there in the comment. So we need to figure out what uh, should happen. I can spoil you guys a little bit of... Uh, no, I won't spoil anything. I'm just going to say that... Obviously, we see a picture of Sylvia here. Uh, there were way more uh, votes who went to her being hypnotized. I think it would have been fun to throw into the rift, I must say. But now we are going for the hypnotized, and I think the story we got out of it is actually really, really interesting. Um, but let's go for a scene. What scene should we take? Let's go for what scene should we take? Do you want to have some parts with Meg and Ken animated or some parts with Sylvan and Tatiana animated? Let's see what happens. Meg and Ken, all right. Oh yeah, also um, congrats on reaching 100 members on the tour subreddit, Costard writes. So uh, yeah, definitely the more followers on the tour uh, subreddit, the better. Because um, then we have uh, also an, uh, uh, a chance to reach out to, you know. Um, I think that tour subreddit has existed for some time, but I like noticed it um, 
uh, recently, and I think it's like a really good place. I love Reddit, and Silas of Lathan has his own subreddit now. That's awesome. Okay, we go for. Let's count. Tuesday, Sylvia. Megan Ken. Megan Ken. Okay, somebody else needs to write because we're even. We're gonna go for. Let's start with Sylvia then. <laughs> okay, so we animate in TV paint normally, and as you can see, um, the choose the paths are also done traditionally. We actually also did some backgrounds for it lately. Um, that I'll show you later when we've started this, but um, we're trying to figure out how to make the backgrounds more efficiently so we can get a high quality. Um, it's only the, the patrons that um, where we have support to uh, make it better, so we always try to see how we can make the episodes as good as possible with what we have to work with. All right. Go for this one. Let me know if there are any like cool questions we need to answer. Oh well, that's easy. That's easy. <laughs> Everybody here in the studio knows that Majora's Mask is my favorite. I think it's because of the age I played it and because it like broke with the linear. Um, with the linear uh, story, it was more like jumping back and forth in time, um, meeting a lot of crazy characters, and you know the world is basically ending, and you have to like l go through the ending of the game so many times. I think it's fucking awesome, um, and uh, I really like Breath of the Wild, of course, and Ocarina of Time, and um, not so much Spirit Tracks, but I think the Phantom Hourglass was fun. Um, I never played the Skyward Sword, I really want to, and uh, the Twilight Princess was uh, one of the ones I really, really wanted, but I didn't have a GameCube, so. Megal and I could fight for hours about what's the best, Majora's or Ocarina of Time. Yeah, Nintendo 64 era, right? Am I right? Okay. <laughs> So let's try to maybe get here this model sheet in here, two seconds. Actually, uh, we have a pretty cool drawing uh, that we are sending out to the patrons uh, when this episode comes out that Anna did. I'd love to show you. It's okay. The Silver and Tatiana one. Which one? Like the Silver and Tatiana oh, painting. Yeah. Yeah. Just put that up as well. It's really cool. I'm hearing everything 20 seconds later in uh, the uh, class, so. <laughs> All right. Um, the track is in here. There we go. I don't know if anybody has been seeing some of the designs for... Um, um, wait, why is it not coming in here? Some of the designs for um, uh, Tales of Lathrian, but we tried to... Because it happens a little bit later than Sylvia and Tatiana's story. Um, we had some designs where Sylvia actually has like long hair. Uh, I don't know if I ever showed them. I can put them in. Yes, yes. Did you not want to show it? One? Did you not want to show the drawing? Yes, I'll show it right after this. And here comes the painting. Um. 
how um, how long would you like this stream to be? Actually, I'd love to find a format for this where it's both uh, super nice for you guys and also um, something we can keep on doing. Because um, obviously, videos take a long time to do, and I would like to also just answer questions fast. And then the animations are, of course, always in production. Um, let's get this one in here. This is like one of the tests for the next episode's background in Shoes the Path. Oopsie. Um, oops, warning. Oops. There we go. Yeah, um, it's coming, Anna. No, I'm asking. Uh, you don't understand Russian, right? <laughs> no. Nope. I think it's just uh, some people are writing in Russian and, and wondering why you're not answering the questions. Just to oh. Absolutely clear. Yeah. It's just because I, I actually don't understand Russian. Uh, so if you have something, uh, uh, just throw it you uh, through um, Google Translate. Uh, normally I can answer questions on YouTube because I'll go in and translate it. Um, but yeah. Uh, let me find the artwork. I'm actually not sure where we put that art piece. I think it was maybe on this. Here we go. It's gonna be there. We go. I'm actually not sure where you put it. Hmm. Sorry about that. There we go, I found it. So this is some of the art pieces I'm sending out to the patrons. Uh, that was really cool. I've been producing most of these Juice the Path with um, Anna uh, Gone Mouse on, um, on Twitter. And uh, yeah, we love our characters. Looks really nice, look at this. Super cool style. Yeah, yeah, just keep putting that in. All right, but now I'm going to animate on, on Tira here. At this point, she's hypnotized and she's going to look really freaky. Um, so um, basically, we want to have like a um, some really big pupil. Uh, oh, sorry, Sylvia. <laughs> I've been having a lot to do with Tira lately, sorry. Um, Normally when we draw these uh, characters, instead of making like eyelashes and stuff, we just like make the line of the eyes a little bit thicker, as you can see here. Um, and I don't know why I really love these like uh, eyelashes on the bottom part. It's a bit opposite of what you see in like normal in cartoons, but it gives this kind of, I don't know, edgy freakiness to it that I, that I like. So, Mr. Lee, good old, um, can you expand on the story you're currently working on? Okay, so Simon Lee, I guess, I'm pretty sure it's him, it's the uh, one I've been working on, on on Tales of Lithran for a long time, I did the backgrounds uh, for uh, most of season one, and um, um, the story I'm working on now for season two is going to be three webisodes uh, called um, Daughter's uh, Revenge. That's going to be the first chapter where we follow Tira, the daughter of Mira. She was step, uh, you know, she was um, introduced in Thug's Life, which was the comic episode that I actually did with Simon. And um, um, yeah, the, the thing about that is in the new episode, we follow uh, the timeline after Megan Ken's Choose the Path episodes end. 
So we get to the uh, to Alethran's throne room. Don't want to spoil too much, but then uh, of course the storyline is gonna be picking up on that cliffhanger, and then we're also gonna pick up on Tira's storyline, which of course involves all the characters we know she's she's um, yeah involved with. Uh, yeah, Wilhelm makes sense, and obviously. Um, she does have some other characters we've met before, but um, we're nearing like uh, the this era we're playing in right now is the Age of Heroes. Um, that's most of season one where we have all the characters introduced. That's also why I like threw in Blen's uh, introduction there, because then we have all the characters introduced, um, and then the, in the next one we have a lot of characters meeting each other again and. The, the plot is thickening. I think uh, that's the the mildest I can say without spoiling too much. Um, but yeah, I think the teaser has like a pretty good um, feel of what you can expect. And uh, the episode is going to be, yeah, the three episodes put together is going to be around 19, 20 minutes. 19 to 20 minutes. Yeah. But... Um, I'd love to also do like a um, video or a live stream where we go through the lore because it's always hard to both talk about the races and the timeline and the characters. We have had like a long discussion here on the age of Mick and Ken and Sylvia and Tatiana in relation to the other storylines. And uh, it makes sense. It's just different uh, at different times we have said different things. But um, I think Mick and Ken and Tira would be around the same age. And Sylvia and Tatiana obviously would be a little bit, uh, just a little bit older. <laughs> what? What are you guys talking about now in the, on the chat? Someone asked um, if there is a Tales of the Lesbian fanfiction. Oh, and you wrote... Uh, I'm just answering them. Uh, Nicole, the Twitch chat. A03, okay, yeah. Like Pingu. Pingu. Noot, noot. Noot, noot. Yeah. But yeah, this is a crazy project that's been existing for a long time. And uh, every time we make a new episode, it's like, it's crazy. Like the, with the amount of budget and the amount of work, uh, it's always very, very like um, crazy to fit in. But uh, here we are once again, ready with the next tale. Um, and it's all thanks to you guys. So thank you all for all your support. put these lines on. Is this because I'm sitting and, sitting and talking? This is going a little bit slower, but uh, yeah, I can tell you there's nothing, nothing, uh, yeah, nobody can guess what this next Choose the Path episode is gonna, what's gonna happen in that. I think that um, I should be a little bit more careful with Thor's revenge and spoiling too much, but I'm pretty sure that it's going to be hard for people to guess this episode. You're welcome to try. <laughs> the background shop. 
that is actually a really, really, really good reminder. Okay, so we did this background job that um, actually I have here. I have it here. The background workshop? Yeah, like um, it was me and Simon who did like experiments on how we could do backgrounds easier. It's been, uh, it's been in progress for... Um, yeah, it was a way to try to make backgrounds easier in, in um, uh, Tales of Lithran. And I think maybe actually Choose the Path would be a pretty good place to try it, or like in future episodes. Let me see, where did I put that? Okay, I think I put it here. Yeah, so you can see basically... Basically we have... I don't know where I put that. Maybe I send it to you, Anna. Let me see. Trying to find it. Yeah, I remember this is chill, so you can, you know, just throw. Um, we're just gonna take it in this in the pace we need. Yeah, here we go. Awesome, I found it. Okay, I love this already. Okay. over here um, I can hear giggle everywhere it's, it's everywhere. Sorry for there we go. Okay. And this one. So basically, um, what we did was this. I found them. Um, we took this. Oh man. So we took all these elements, which Simon made, and then we tried to uh, figure out a way to throw these onto like a. Um, a background and then paint the rest from there and the test we did basically ended up being this one as you can see here just need Sylvia a little bit behind here it's like super cool I really like how that uh, image turned out um, I think we could optimize in uh, by trying to use these elements and, and set it up there was also a, um, um, we did like a, a background workshop the other day where we also did some tests on making more 2D feel style and for me and Anna just tried a lot of things. So we're trying out little things, uh, a lot of little things. The style will probably change um, on Choose the Path where we experiment. Um, yeah, what was I? Where was I? Somebody asks, do you get your music for tour commissioned or is it royalty free or does someone on your team make it? Yeah, it's someone from the team for sure. It's um, Matthias um, Valiant who's been doing the music uh, for all the episodes. He's a legend. And um, yeah, he's also doing the music for this one. And it's really good. There are like two songs that um, we are not going to use in the episode, but we are sitting and playing around with doing a bonus episode afterwards with uh, one of the songs he did. And it's uh, <laughs> it's it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. The genre is, is like super 80s 
really nice, but uh, we'll see. Um, and for the other song, I think we're gonna use that for the end credits. Yeah, I, I talk to him all the time, so I'll give him my regards. The music is also what makes this project, as this world, what it is. And um, yeah, but I mean, I know now I just saw Simon in the chat here. We have to do like a, a background video at some point, as we talked about uh, on like uh, the YouTube channel. Would be super cool. Um, we have like a lot of different videos coming out, like uh, how we do. Um, we're sitting and filling around and making like a composing video and some. Um, uh, law videos and a lot of different things, but it's been really packed lately, so it's gonna come. Actually, it's also going to be fun. We are recording uh, Wilhelm's voice on Saturday, and uh, I think that's going to be really cool. It's uh, with good old uh, Kenneth I made the project with. Uh, I'm, of course, recording Vito, but he's not as much in this film as, uh, as, you as, uh, as in the other episodes. What should we do this with this earring? It's way too thick. It's okay. Just do this. I think this should be fine. Should we just like make a final scene or should we just start cleaning up for the episode? I think we can do this, like take as many scenes as possible. That would be nice. Actually, I'm just gonna take this up here. I think that's gonna be better. Do we have any good questions coming? How are you working with Matthias for the music? I ask him for mood or you want him to be totally free after you explain everything? Everything? Do you give him the storyboard, etc.? Yeah, me and Matthias, we, uh, hook, we hook up usually very, very, very early in the production and then we talk through the film and boards and already start there to come with uh, ideas for the music. And, um, and right now, usually we have both been before we've been doing both sound and music together but on this episode we have another guy doing the foley so i work with uh, a sound guy and then uh, matthias can focus on the music uh, but matthias is also you know he's epic he's also the voice of elethran so he is basically the strongest hero to have existed in the world of elethran but jenny if you have like questions from uh Twitch, just let me know. Yeah. Okay, I think we should just do as many scenes as possible instead of coloring. We can always jump back to that. So this is a shot where we actually just need her to sit still. So I think I'm gonna make just a little glow in the eyes, like a little movement in the eyes. And then I think that's gonna be okay for choose that path. Normally we would in all the animations in the normal episodes, we would 
move the line, which means that we would draw holes uh, more times than just once. So the line looks like it's alive. And um, for choose the path, it's mainly um, to get the character across and to make sure that um, um, yeah, that it reads. And then um, in order to be able to make an episode in a short amount of time, we have to take some decisions there. All right. So let's get these eyes back there. I think we can put these on. I think the next shot I'm gonna do, now we did one with uh, Sylvia, just uh, to draw her, and yeah, Sylvia is a nice character. She actually, she's voiced by my sister, the, the voices she has. It's uh, <laughs> back when we did the sound library for these episodes, we just like gathered all the voices for who had voiced the previous characters and for new characters, uh, yeah, we needed some original voice there. This is gonna be fine. What animation software are you guys using? Like, uh, if you are animating. This is basically clean up, but uh, it's just to make this frame that is 82 frames um, look interesting for all those 82 frames. Maybe this could be a little bit stronger. Okay, so Flash and Animate, After Effects, Adobe Flash, TV Paint, TV Paint, Toon Boom. Yeah, I've also used Toon Boom um, and Flash. But TV Paint, I don't know, for Tales of Lathrian, that just gives, gives the the right feel. It's like animating on, on paper. Um, and the bitmap restrictions are actually sometimes okay. Uh, there are different... Uh, we just learned a really good trick from one of the team members on this production where we could rotate a line or make it bigger and then we could go in into a setting and like life hack it to not be pixelated it doesn't work on everything but for example on choose the path it's really really a good trick Maya, it's watercolor. Good luck animating in watercolor. Watercolor is basically just like knowing how to spill your water, right? Ooh, thanks, Ebus. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> I don't know what to uh, keep up the, your amazing work. Every time me and my bros have a chance to meet up, we rewatch all of season one. Love from Italy. Thank you, Ebus. Ebus. Seabus, Seabus, where? Seabus used to be actually a Dungeons and Dragons character I had in one of my campaigns. That was a, <laughs> it was a, no, that's from a comic I did once. It's like a little demon that grows out from you, but uh, I think it's a cool name. <laughs> um, but um, season one, I'm actually going to re-upload uh, season one soon, here in the summer, um, because there is a very nasty glitch on Emerath. In traveling DT and every time I watch it it pains me so I'm gonna upload uh, season one again with all the um, 
with all the yeah Sebus. Awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Means a lot. Um but um the um um where was I? Oh yeah, the glitch in season one with Amarath. It's like a, a, a wrong export of a compositing that was in a file. Um, and I didn't notice it. So there's like two Amarath and two Rodents in one shot and they like merge and it's super strange, very funky. Um, so I want to change that. And also there has been a lot of copyright claims problems on season one because of one track that Matthias made. But um, but it's like it's under like a rooster so we keep on whitelisting it but it comes back and now we've just removed that song that's why i also uploaded thug's life full again because it's actually without that song in sid and uruth's episode it's actually really nice like uh, to have you guys here in the stream it's a uh, it's our last normal week uh, before everything goes chaotic next month um, with family vacation and all kinds of stuff where I'm around the country um, and at the same time we need to get the sound and music uh, recorded okay now I can't in Denmark we have this word called um, I don't know if that's correct to say here, but uh, we say fly fucking, and that's what I do here. <laughs> like, uh, really doing the little details. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Let's see what this is. Yeah, this is good. Okay, I think I'm gonna take this one now. That's a fun one. So you can see the sketch here I did first. So here we see that Ken decides to shoot one of the two knights. And as you can see, our frame rate uh, is 24 frames per second. That has to be adjusted a little bit. Because when we do the boards, we actually board on 10 frames per second to have a better overview of the frames. So that's why this shot is a little bit uh, slow. Uh, so that's the first thing I'm going to go in and, and look at. It's going to be a cool shot. So he takes his crossbow up. That's like a squash and a stretch. And then we have the bolt flying through the air. It's like... <laughs> so it flies a lot. <laughs> and then it goes towards poor Volto. Oh yeah, these guys' names are Volto and George. And you guys in the community did not like these guys. You just wanted to nail these guys to the wall. So that's what we're going to do. Let's move for them some timing. Be nice to get a little bit less here. And and then give a little bit more time here. That'll be cool. And then it goes fast. And then here we have it flying through the air that can take some time. Cool. And then we have it flying through there and we don't want anything on four fives here. So we take it on twos and threes and fours. A good trick is like when you have like an, something on fours, then go to threes and then twos and don't mix it too much. It's like animating spacing, but also on the timeline. Yes. Then we move the other layer. I'll get back to the chat in a second. I just need to get the timing here. Oof. I think 
we can do this one. Maybe even less. <laughs> what, are the, what are they writing? I know, I was just making jokes about the Sphinx in the place. Oh yeah, I really love the Sphinx. It's going to be interesting to see mm. how her storyline is going to continue as well. When I'm talking just to the guys on the team, they're sitting and helping on the chat, the chat as well on Twitch and uh, YouTube. Poof. I think this is cool actually. Yeah, when this is going to be colored, obviously, there's not going to be extra lines. It's like a cliffhanger within one shot here. What's going to happen? He's going to have a bolt in his forehead. <laughs> it is Tales of Redman, you never know. It's probably going to chop off his head. Okay. I'm just going to duplicate the structure here. Okay, I'm just going to take some questions again before I get into this. Have there been some good ones? When you animate shots with dynamic cameras like that, do you go pose to pose or straight ahead? Good question. When we do the Tiras um, uh, revenge episode, you'll see some action. Um, shots where it's animated both on the characters uh, where where they like move around the screen, the screen, and also on the compositing camera, and um, that's because when you do a camera move, you can also do parallaxes and all kinds of stuff when you're in in compositing, but on a shot like this, it's back to old school where I just like animate the camera. Um, this is an action shot, so I really enjoy animating the camera myself. But we also have a lot of cameras done by uh, the program. Like, for example, uh, let me see if I can find a shot. Um, that doesn't spoil too much. Like, for example, here. If I play it without a camera, this is just the scene. It's pretty... Uh, yeah, that's not very interesting. But then when you put the camera on, you know, we animate it like this and then we don't have to animate everything all the time. So uh, we mix it up. I think when it's really nice action scenes, I like to animate the camera just because then I can play with the, like distort the perspective even more. Just like have you seen on backgrounds where they have like the background building looks like this, but on the camera it just looks like it pans like this. Um, yeah, I think it's just what you like animating. Uh, that's also why I think effects are really fun to animate. You have like freedom to, to do exactly what you want. Any more? Um, I kidnapped Senpai really wants to know what happened to the two characters that Vito and Rohan stole the weapons from in the reward. The oh. <laughs> Actually, that's a good idea. The last time I heard about those two characters was uh, in a Reddit AMA where somebody asked me to draw what they were doing now, or what, actually I think it was what the adventure was like before the reward, um, where I did a, a brutal mistake. I remember I was drawing her like, uh, as I remembered her, and uh, the fan was like, that chest is too small. So I think I've grown, <laughs> like, uh, with, um, the reward is pretty old, so. But I think what uh, could be shown in um, in um, what could be shown with these characters could be like a little bonus choose their path or like a little bonus um, web comic or bonus episode where we follow them. Uh, I'll make sure that when Megan Kent's and Sylvia and Tatiana's storyline ends this uh, by the end of this summer, um, at least the choose the path storyline here, um, and before Dora's Revenge come out be sure to check in on the Patreon and on the YouTube channel and stuff because then we're probably going to throw out some more characters we could follow. And I'm just going to note down now what uh, that these are an option. I think just from pure imagination here, um, I imagine that uh, they are a strong couple that have been traveling around. They have, uh, they are like uh, if I remember correctly, it's uh, 
warrior and a wizard as well. Um, yeah, obviously the weapons uh, shows that. And they are running around being adventurers, following Elethran's footsteps like everyone else. Uh, but they have obviously been traveling a little bit more than Vito and Wilhelm at that point. I think that they would probably grow into taking some uh, some adventures that uh, can make them travel to different locations on the map where I think that Vito and Wilhelm has like a goal of going to the X. I think these two have a goal of getting rich by defeating monsters and getting new equipment. Uh, I'm sure they're going to find some new weapons um, out looting. Like the two lizard people, Sue asks into the two lizard people. Basically, the two lizard people, Blen and Yarna, um, are actually not a couple when we see them. Uh, it's Yarna is the only one who uh, had her hand over Blen um, in the tribe. She um, she took care of him and uh, he was a, a, like a good buddy and they grew up in the same egg pile. But he's so different and weird because he's half human, half lizard. And she's so hardcore um, tribe, uh, um, you know, warrior. So when he leaves town to find Vito, uh, he leaves the flower to say like, thank you for being a friend in this tribe. And then he travels out and she's like this kind of person who's like, we're not going to leave anyone. Um, um, in in my tribe, we are gonna make sure that uh, yeah, she wants to make sure that he uh, doesn't get lost. But let's see what happens on the journey. That could easily be the next uh, choose that path. It's gonna be interesting what Gaia says when she meets Blen one day. She's probably going to be like, you did what now, Tovito? <laughs> yeah, just roll the questions up. I'll check up um, like when I can. But now I'm just going to animate this. <laughs> I have so many versions of it. What's that? Oh. Emerald kissing. Oh. Blind now from the oh. <laughs> okay, so the question is what happened to the couple that Elethran and Emerald meet on the bench who are like super casual kissers compared to Elethran and uh, and Emerald's wild uh, love? I guess they've just been together for longer. <laughs> um, no, but they're two beggars actually. Um, who were like both of the characters are people in the real life who were, were placed in this scene. Um, really nice design. You can see that um, the girl, she's actually both in, in uh, the first hero and also in Traveling DT. I really love her design. It fits super well with our, uh, with our universe here. See you, Natasha. Okay, so basically, <laughs> basically, I would say that they are not blind. Think about all the crazy things that happens in Elithran. They get like, Vito is on fire at one point, uh, like literally, and he's dragged over a volcano uh, field. And uh, he also explodes inside of a volcano, now inside of like a poisonous uh, cave. It's like Dungeons and Dragons, even though you should probably get blind. blind there are some... A very many roles to make in order to not get blind and if you get blind you probably have like a potion or an antidote somewhere just like Vito and Wilhelm finds this this chalice of restoration Wilhelm is a vampire that can be undone but then he finds a chalice that basically could help him he just don't want to let go of the powers he's like a teenager who gets too strong but he has so many uh, minuses with it but he's like ah power and like uh, cursed or back to normal and 
and you know have to like fight for getting stronger uh, that's uh, what should i do yeah and also he sees vito's new family life and he's like all right i think i'm just gonna go for the uh for the um adventurous life what comment Where is it? I always wanted to play Chrono Trigger, but I didn't yeah. own a Super Nintendo. Uh, I've asked, I have to ask, would Wilhelm join Simi Experience, three guys group of heroes adventures? If they asked Wilhelm to join the group temporarily, would he consider teaming up with them? I'm sure Ka Lavi here has a group of Dungeons and Dragons friends, and they have met Wilhelm. And maybe Wilhelm has teamed up, and now they want to see if that's breaking character. Maybe that's what happened here. Um, Wilhelm would sh for sure be up for. Uh, um, Wilhelm would for sure be up for joining some adventurers. I just think he's not the kind of guy who sticks around. Wilhelm w had Vito as his like super buddy, and I think that uh, he probably joins up with others. But he is kind of like um, a guy who, who, you know, it has to go go from his head, and uh, and um, he's a very uh, interesting character. And when you see the next episode, you will see that uh, um, you know this powerful being called Wilhelm has like a presence around him that I think many travelers won't be able to come nearby uh, and. I think if fans come up to him and be like, give me a signature or something, I also think that uh, he would probably want to get away uh, more than stick around this guy. What about the baby of Vito? I hope he or she turn into a great hero. Yeah, season three. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, um, if the if the if the Kickstarter had been uh, reaching an all stretch goal, the next episode would actually have um, uh, Vito and the and the kids. And but we'll see. We'll see after this episode if we um, get to that. Maybe I should show you the designs of the kids actually. Yeah, here. Say their names. <laughs> it's the names of uh, Vito and uh, Vito and Gaia. Uh, the names are Acne and Mulp. There used to be another child called Manto, but we sacrificed him to another character. I mean, Manto will come back. There was a big debate about the Mento name, but Acne and Mulp are the names of uh, Vito and Gaia's kids. Let me see if I can find a drawing of them here. <laughs> yeah, Mento. Do we have the flower somewhere? Did, did, did it die? Oh, here. Ah, Henry. that's Henry, and it's not the, you know, this is Henry, uh, my um, best friend's son, and also the Witcher uh, actor. Henry is a Witcher. Sluder's son is called Henry. No. <laughs> Henry Cavill, I love him. <laughs> Henry Cavill, good old. Um... Let me just find these characters for you. There we go. Have you seen these characters before? Like, is it the first time I show Vito and Gaia's children? Were they in the card game? Oh, but the card game. So everyone who got the card game has seen them. And that's only like a hundred people. Um, There we go, cutie pies. Let 
look at those cuties. They're gonna make some amazing adventurers at some point. This is Acne. This is Acne. She has, uh, yeah, Acne is like, of course, means fire. Most fantasy players know that, but um, she's the energetic one. She has that from Vito, but also the wisdom from Gaia. But this guy is the opposite. He's like more, he's he's more the wise guy, this son. He has like Gaia, uh, Gaia's traits. And that's Mulp. Yep. Not much I get to draw, but you have so many good questions, just uh, keep them coming. Yeah. He was uh, sacrificed to the blood god. Maybe we get Manto in again. But right now it's Agni and Mob. <laughs> Manto will come. Manto is Blen. <laughs> no, that's not Gaius. Yeah, Manto is actually a girl. That's, uh, that's true. I, um, yeah. What is it Manto comes from? It's from some kind of like... Uh, um, uh, some kind of Greek mythology... What was it meant, Mento? It was like some kind of nymph. It was, it was some kind of nymph, and Gaia is uh, it's a dryad nymph type of character, so maybe maybe Mento comes back. We've been talking so much about Mento in the studio, so <laughs> like, yeah, that's a good chance. Mento's revenge in four years. <laughs> the forgotten child. They actually had the triplets. But uh, they tossed out Manto because he was the weakest. Ah, that could be the thing. You know, maybe Gaia is the kind of, of uh, she has like animal blood in her. So she like uh, sorts away uh, like uh, the children that are <laughs> not, uh, I don't know where I'm going with this. I wonder how we're gonna these. Th yeah. I hope we're gonna be able to get color on this episode. We'll see. Uh, I can't promise anything at this point. Uh, if we need to get it out in like two weeks, <laughs> let's see. Someone asks, have you thought about using low poly 3D to put your foot together background to speed things up, and then either build painted textures? Okay, so the question is that um, if we use, would like to use 3D to build backgrounds, and basically we have been doing that uh, on some of the episodes. Um, the chest uh, has been 3D before, and um, and the um, what more did we have as 3D? I think the throne room we built, and yeah, I think that uh, in the reward there were some tests on this um and i've totally um i've totally i can totally s like that really saves time but uh, sometimes it also doesn't save time you have to set it up the layout process was one of those processes that got a little bit on like what it's called it snuck up on us and uh, it's you know a lot of work doing layouts especially when you really want to just jump to backgrounds um yeah but uh it's a good idea. Right now we're testing another thing in um, on the Choose the Path where we actually have like a setup, a cam uh, like a room set up first and then we can place the camera. That's another way of doing it, but it's still a lot of work transferring that to like the location and the colors and the values and all that. But we're doing a lot of different tests.
What other questions do we have? Oh yeah, in season one there's something like there's a championship where heroes uh, are fighting and that's like basically just a gladiator match. Remember that in the Age of Heroes where this story takes place, it's a pretty savage uh, world where civilization hasn't been, been uh, putting its marks yet. As you see in uh, in Choose Their Path, um, the moose, the golden dragon, really wants to put civiliza civilization into the world. Um, but um, but before that, it's just like each city to its own, and you know some have like um, partnerships with other villages and cities, and some have not. Um, and um, yeah, I think that uh, this gladiator thing is just like throwing monsters into the pit or like adventurers um, fighting together to get like, uh, um, how do you say, to get like money or status. Um, but there also are many other things like, uh, there's also this idea that, you know, they have like different sports competitions where they use their abilities and magic and, and stuff like that. There's also going to be a little scene like that in um, in the next episode. Where we get this confirmed. It's a good question. I actually just answered something similar to that on YouTube earlier today. Um, the beard started also with a Lithuan. He became like the fashion role model when he traveled around the whole world and showed his glorious mustache, this really weird X he had on his face. And then um, as you know, generations went by, uh, Hero started to make their own trademark. It's kind of like the business card by growing uh, cool hair or uh, or mustaches or eyebrows, all kinds of stuff that is on there. It, if you notice, all the characters has like a cool or strange silhouette in their facial hair. Um, and I would say everybody like started doing this after the. Uh, glorious Elithran and um, and I think you know if you come and you have a big moustache it just shows epicness or if you have like uh, as Sylvia has like a big uh, round hair it's also prestige so facial hair is prestige in this world and, and epicness and if you look at Brun he can only get like a little uh, thing here on his cheek uh, but he still goes around and seeing his uh, hero so there's a little meta layer to that Um and if you have like uh, uh, Vito, <laughs> he has like a huge beard when he's uh, when he's epic and old. Um, I don't know where I want to go with Vito here, but uh, I just like in the original character son, he had like three hairs on his cheek. But I think maybe actually we removed it. It all came from like mustaches are just fun. <laughs> Chin, not cheek. A giant mole on his cheek, yeah. Yeah, I think we should close the windows if we have screams. It's just pre people screaming outside, don't worry about it. Yesterday in Denmark we had this thing called Sankt Hens. Don't know if you have it in your part of the world, but uh, on that on that day it's the longest day of the year. And uh, what we do, and what's really actually weird, is that we burn a witch on the fire, uh, on like a, a fireplace, 
and then you put like a, a lot of like wood together and then you place this big doll on it that's a witch which is pretty horrible if you think about it but um well that's like a tradition and then you sing this song where you like burn the witch on the <laughs> on the fire it's it's pretty bizarre when you think about it Gotta keep our fantasy traditions. Season of the Witch. Why would you kill the witches? They're cool. It's the Empire. They don't like strange. Ah, non-flavored -spa non sparkling water. I used to hate it as a kid. Now I like it. I've grown into liking tasteless things. I don't know why, but it feels fun. It feels funny. <laughs> it feels funny to drink sparkling water. Um. Yeah, it should have it on the label that it's not for kids. It's grown up. It's a grown-up drink, like wine and grape juice. That's a funny drawing of Ken. <laughs> it's gonna go so fast, it's okay. Yeah, I think so. It's okay. So little in the frame. We're checking the arc afterwards. His eyes are a little far away from the nose. I want to know more about Gaia. Somebody says that? <laughs> no, just Jen. I'm just bringing in some questions. This. Well, Gaia. Gaia is a dryad uh, nymph, as mentioned earlier in the stream. And, um, yeah. I love her. She's great. She's Vito's uh, girlfriend, and she's she was a mighty. She is a mighty hero that protects the forest of inspiration, and to dig more into the forest of inspiration, which is also where Vito and Gaia lives now. It's like um, one of the few places of the lands where um, where it's super hard to place civilization because one of the DTs. Um, lives in the middle of this forest and the further in you get the more magical it gets and if you stay there you become part of this forest somehow with magical creatures and stuff and um, and uh, that it's like this whole forest is part of it. it's kind of its own world with ancient uh, uh, lore and races and animals and stuff like that and now Vito's and, and Vito and Gaia's treehouse is in this forest as well. Um, yeah. I think that she's just a protector of the forest. And um, when she travels around in the world, as we see her do in, in Wilhelm's Curse, she's out to, you know, r restore... Um, she probably she's like saving the creatures that the deities left behind the magical deities and the ones that can't fit in she brings them to the forest um, and the harmful ones she you know makes sure doesn't exist so she's like just a hero but with less uh, less egoistic traits as many of the others um, yeah she's just very likable boy Todd Make heroes that come from the forest, or maybe a monster. Oh yeah, should I take the curtains? Yeah, if you can take the curtains down, that'd be nice. I have like guard rays on my whole side now. Ah, oh, 
That's nice. Did that do anything? Yeah. Yes. It did for me. What is the craziest D and D character I have ever played, uh, created, and played? Oh, there are so many. There are so many. Which one should we take? Um, I really, 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 really enjoy a character that I actually also named one of the characters in Tales of Lethran from. He's called uh, Loris, and. Uh, Lord Cyril is Loris backwards. Um, he was also a vampire, <laughs> of course. And um, what was cool about this character, it was like an, an arch enemy of the the group. And um, I really like this character because I gave him this special trait where he had one powerful... Uh, um, one? Oh yeah, which is, he had like one powerful ring that could make all of the rings on the hand um you know all the rings you had on your uh, your hands could activate uh, if you just like kissed the ring it would have like a magical ability or like raise a skill or do something so he went around collected these magical rings and artifacts around the world until he had like his rings full uh, his hands full of rings and he could like activate magic abilities and then he was just this crazy character who just like the whole world was just his playground so he got all these weird ideas to just have fun basically in the realms and these heroes were just like his his um he just found them really funny because uh, um he threw them into all his little uh, she uh, yeah she different teams really like him he was a fun character um i had this character called um, what was his name? M um, Malto Tea Leaf, and um, he was like a, a thief in an old game. And um, he always like uh, the reason why I like him is that he took the adventure in a really weird direction. He uh, yeah pissed off some guards, and it's you know the usual stupid stuff uh, when you're a thief, and then. Uh, the characters was thrown into a prison and we couldn't get out of that prison because of Molso here and um, actually no his that was one of his names he, his other name was Matumpa was what we called him in the group but basically because we were in the prison when the mission we were supposed to stop these black uh, paladin knights that came in and destroyed the city we were still in prison um, yeah we ended up spending two years in prison in a game where we like took our levels were from within the jail, which was really fun because we had to like, yeah, it was a very different game. What more? Um, also like they had like a dwarven leader at some point called uh, Musk and um, that was, we played a system where you could like, uh, your ability points could be affected so i yeah it was really stupid i was um on a fumble i hit my head without a helmet i think i was shot in the head or something and then i lost seven or six like a lot of intelligence and basically became like a really really stupid uh, leader and i ended up killing myself uh, because i took some really dumb strategic uh, decisions against a uh, seven-headed hydra but he was really fun to play also in the time where i had low intelligence <laughs> what else what was his deal that god and the reward Yeah, that's just hard because when I open up the Twitch uh, at right now, they get like extra echo. Oh, so I need you to say them. Oh yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> just turned down the switch because there was an echo. Oh, 
Oh, here we have it. Just need to turn off the sound. All right, I'm in the chat here as well now. All right, like both chats open now. Somebody said um, that God in the reward, what was his deal? Who got the head chopped off? Well, in the lore, actually, he's protecting the God realms um, with all the deities. Um, and um, obviously, <laughs> it's also a symbol of Vito and Wilhelm being that great that they can now challenge deities just like uh, just like Elethran did. Uh, Elethran just had more like... A, Vitam Willem had the kind of like, okay, we have to get through to this X on the map, so move. And he's like, no, I can't. I need to protect these realms. And there are more types like him. Um, oh, I think that's the wrong hand. But um, basically, they they um, has to go and buy. It's like a, a very um, strong monster. But for um, a Lithran, he needs to to go kill all these DTs actually because the his family and everyone was killed by um, by a DT so he has like a grudge there um, basically the DT called Karl Tofal <laughs> um, he's like the sand god and after the DTs return to the north and say like we don't want to be part of this we don't want to um, um, be part of this world that we created it can like all the creations we've created is a mess. They can just l deal with it themselves. Okay, so one of the DTs says, like, okay, while all of you guys go relax or hide in the woods or hide in the in, in the layer where we s we've seen most of them in the first hero, uh, this sand god, cards of all, he goes out to slay, um, like to, to make the whole land into sand, to, like, zero everything out. Um, but... In that process, Alethran's home village is destroyed and his family is is uh, turned into sand. And then Alethran challenges this deity and kills him. And um, some say that's how he got so powerful. Some say that's just how he he learned that no, he could beat everything. But something definitely happened to him there where he got more powerful than, than most. Um, and um, uh, yeah, so DTs are just like super powerful beings that can create them, have magic to to grant wishes and create. But most of the DTs that are left, they're just like super lazy and just wait for the whole world to get back to normal. So they um, um, they just sit and every thousand years or so they create like a waterfall or or something and DTs can also die as you know by now so there are also not many left When, uh, how long time would you, this be nice uh, for you to continue on this stream? Just so have like a good image, we a good time, sense of time. We can always uh, go back and do this again later, especially now since um, we want to get this thing running and going. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I think we'll, we'll stop soon. How's this gonna look? With the perspective. Yeah, that's gonna look nice. What's up? <laughs> I mean, as if you have anything against the the drawings, just remember that this is an action shot, and you can get away with more stuff. Actually, normally, when if I'm not if I wasn't sitting and talking, I would take a lot 
quicker and uh, quicker moves towards the different uh, the different phases of the animation. But this is like good for sitting and talking as well. Then I don't have to sit and do too much of the thinking. I'm just like making sure that this works. I mean, Nasco less says that he hasn't seen more shrines in the series, but there are actually more, um, like, hints to other deities in the show. Um, the one we hear about most without explaining too much of at the moment is uh, the deity called Humun, and Humun is like the deity who created the the, the humans, and. Um, which led to all the other DTs wanting to create something crazy as well, or intelligent, or something that could kill the humans, or nature disaster, and then that's how the whole mess started. Um, but he's trapped underneath Earth. Um, I was planning on, if you had thrown Sylvia into the rift, um, it would probably be down to the underground where he also is. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, love Uruth. Well, I mean, uh, this is just a world where I think that all of the different characters um, that um, I think that it's just like there's room for different types of characters here. Don't want to like lock lock myself and yeah too much um i think he's he's a cool character because he's uh, he looks for love he's shy and he's a disco dancing fighter who uh, came from like a city or uh, like a village a moving village it's like a snail and in the snail house there's a village inside where his tribe is from and um, the snail is called bowie <laughs> um and he didn't fit in there, uh, but everyone there are like glamorous and training, um, and yeah, basically it's a it's a world of uh, he he comes from a whole city of LGBT, um, but there's like a whole hierarchy there as well that uh, he he lived. Um, yeah, don't know what more to say to it actually. It's, it's like a, it's just really cool to be able to tell the story as different characters. Um, when I lived in I lived in the States for 10 months, uh, I lived with a, um, uh, a gay couple and um, that was like really, really a, a awesome, awesome, awesome time um, where I got to see a little bit of that world as well. So um, yeah, and I've yeah, also worked with a lot of cool people. But I mean, me personally, I think that uh, yeah, everybody should uh, just allow like be who they are. Um, yeah, what more can I say? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's one. This got a little bit too thick. Let's just go in and adjust that.
Yeah, maybe like this. Okay, so yeah, we do have like uh, toward Discord. Um, I can just send the link. It's usually just uh, patrons that get in there, patreon.com at tales of uh, slash tales of Lethran. But um, occasionally, I just throw a little, a little invite here. Let's do that. So I'm gonna send this link. Link. It's gonna work for one day. Get in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's on the Twitch here, and then it's gonna come to the YouTube chat here. Boom. Yeah. So click it within the next 24 hours. Do, would you be interested in seeing more streams like this? Uh, just uh, throw your, uh, your, like if this is like uh, cozy to come and hang out. Because um, then I know if we should continue to do st uh, streams like this where we just sit and draw our chat. Uh, I was planning on doing like a stream where we sit and watch um, maybe season one or some of the episodes and that I, then I sit and click pause and talk about the different uh, what the different characters mean and what they are all about and the lore that's something I'm I think would be super nice to do like a little uh, live um, director's commentary kind of thing where you can sit and ask questions and we can just take it um, yeah so you know the different decisions that was made Nice. That's great. Actually, I'm going to delete this one. Yeah. Yeah. We have been talking have Tuesday, Tuesday path, Tuesdays. <laughs> Tuesday, 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 Tuesday paths, Tuesday paths. <laughs> Um, where we either stream a little bit and talk on Tuesdays um, and then we just set that as a thing would be super awesome actually to get into that uh, and then we can just um, you know we can figure out uh, in the community what we, we what we want to like stream and and do on the streams but um, <laughs> I have been asked so many times whether I would like get on um, on Twitch and do more live videos and I think that at this point now that I also watch a lot of uh, streams myself um, I think that um, yeah it's gonna be like uh, something we start on um, where it's more like casual when we sit and do the streams and we talk and we sometimes it's more um, and sometimes more like it's more like questions like today um, but yeah, I love doing it. And thanks for all your uh, engagement. At the very start of the stream, someone was asking if uh, all of the team would do collaboration with drawing. Ah, we talked about having like uh, what is called a doodle where we sit and can draw on the same thing. Mm, a, a draw pile section. Yeah, that's, that would be really fun actually. So maybe we should do that on one of the Tuesday, choose the path streams. <laughs> or like one of the streams. Where the hell do they begin? 
if somebody wants to start creating a fantasy world that's the question right mm -hmm. where do they begin yeah. well first i'm actually doing world building workshops in denmark and i've been doing the last couple of weeks um, and um, you need to figure out what it is you want to tell first like uh, what is the feeling and atmosphere usually you should probably write down three words you really want to explore or, or like that in, inspires you and then when you have um, found those um, then you should go in and and basically um, before you make your stories you should make a lot of like some rules for your world uh, like for example an avatar they have like six legs and all the animals and there's like a planet and the only other thing we know is earth but on this planet they have like some material that earth really wants but there are some kind of engine tribe living there okay so there's a starting point um you can also figure out what characters there are in the world uh, all the characters and objects that you know will be in the world you can make like the environment draw a map um, and um yeah, figure out why it's interesting to be in this world. Um, what's the hook? I think that's like a good start if you can answer these things. I'll add you as the first friend when I get the chance, Fern. Okay, so let's... Uh, community hookup, whoop! Yeah. If the, the 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 clever animator would probably ask why I do the hair, because it uh, would be best to do, uh, you know, follow through, and that's basically because because my brain right now is at the stream as well. So normally I would probably put the hair after I'd like put the head, so it would move, but uh, this is gonna work fine as well. I think we're gonna end in let's say five minutes so if you have your last uh, if you have some last questions I think um, that's now we're gonna we're gonna do that and thank you so much for stopping by you are awesome and thank you so much everyone who also has helped on getting the stream going on Twitch um, I think that's really really something that uh, would be awesome to get going as well so uh, thanks everyone what? Raid some people. But we'll save that for next time. What does that mean? Uh, basically where you uh, dump all of your audience into another stream that you'd like you like to view in chat so they move over to their thing. And we'll do that next time. Okay, so next time we're going to do this thing <laughs> that uh, uh, Jenny just mentioned where we're going to put all of the ones watching the stream into something else. I'm not sure completely what it means. Oh, my favorite Lutheran character. Ah, that's so hard to ask the creator, right? I love all of them. Really, really, really much. But, uh, of course, uh, I can't... I can't uh, move aside. Um, obviously, Vito is, like, one of my uh, favorites, of course. Uh, I can't, uh, can't hide that. Um... What? Okay, how do Chabby Lady know about uh, my barista character? How do you know about the barista character? <laughs> Who are you, What's the barista character? Yeah, like I know what the barista character is, but 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 why does Chabby Lady know about my barista character? Okay, basically, a long time ago, I wrote a comic that was like. Ah, it's Christian. Okay, hello, Christian. Um, um, basically, I made a comic a long time ago, which was around 480 pages, and it's a lot of that has been inspired into um, Lithran, and um, and it's been really a good way to like um, think storytelling and and build characters. One of the characters who was like a villain in this world, um, he was called the Barista. And uh, he had been consuming, so like he won like a year's use of coffee and he consumed all of it in one go because he was always tired. And then people said he died, but no, he awakened as 
the barista. And uh, the barista was a guy who who never slept, but he had to like fill up with coffee, uh, beans, and um, and he could like um, shoot coffee out of his little finger. And then he was super hyper and really annoying to be around. Um, and and um, then his enemies was like the cream avenger and the sugar daddy, uh, which he was a really fun character. <laughs> um, maybe he'll show up at some point. One of the three coolest thing you can things you can think about. Oh, well, Tales of Elytheran is obviously one of them. <laughs> uh, um, right now, um, yeah, the um, miniatures and painting <laughs> that was a really cool. Um, and probably the yeah, I mean, with Tales of Elytheran, I would say of course the release of the next is gonna be really cool. For, but oh, so I have to think about something that's not fantasy. It's hard. Okay, I'm gonna go cliche here. I think that you know, just life and being here with uh, such an amazing team and being so lucky to be in such a, a cool project here. That's like something you can really only uh, uh, dream of when you're like a teenager. And um, I think that. Uh, <laughs> Natasha writes Warhammer. That's my miniatures <laughs> I'm talking about. Natasha is also one of the teammates. All right. Last question. We'll so take a last Batman, one. Life and Warhammer. Yeah. <laughs> so basically all three is the life. Three main pillars, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last, uh, last question and then I think we're going to close it for today. Wait, we have one. Oh, yes. yes. Hello, Mr. Mines. Have you seen the news about the new Pokemon MOBA? Yeah. So have I seen the new, yeah. the news about the new Pokemon MOBA? Yeah. <laughs> I started the stream mentioning this thing, and when I say Pokemon is cool and all that, I, yeah. I think this is probably it was we were in the middle of it. What like just in the middle of all these dislikes it was pretty uh, it was a pretty crazy event of just uh, like it was like experience an online mob just <laughs> like uh, hyping them themselves up about the like no i mean it's fair they make a, a, a you know league of legends dota kind of game for pokemon uh, maybe it wasn't necessary for a street like a direct i'm not sure um, i'm maybe not the correct audience but uh, there are probably a lot of tournament uh, potential in it that they can expand the IP to. So, yeah. All right. But... Um, That was actually, uh, we had a, a voice of Vito at some point, which I think is not in the show, but it was put somehow by one of the team members in the newest episode, and now I can only hear Vito laughing like this. <laughs> can you uh, can you do it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, have a great summer, everyone. And uh, Lena, also a team member in the chat here. Awesome. Have a, like, um <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> All right, but uh, take care, everyone. Thank you so much for the um, for being on the chat, and um, I'll let you know when we do another one. And uh, that's gonna be yeah. Next video is probably gonna be choose the path, and maybe we are next one of of uh, live streams might be like going through episodes, like uh, speaking over the episode, asking questions, and uh, we might also do another one of these. All right, awesome. Thank you for being here. Take care and uh, journey to reward. Take care. Bye.